Uh, so, where should we head to next? So, now we are on deck five, and the really cool thing about this deck in particular is that almost 90% of it is dedicated only to kids. Um, huh. So, we, you have three different kids' clubs, and here's the Oceaneer Lab. Um, it's just it's more dedicated to um, computers, to science, to hands-on things, and um, mm-hmm. over here um, on the cruise, you can actually make um, blubber with the crew. It's, a, it's really fun. So the, the the team at the kids club will work with the actual kids themselves, and they actually make science experiments. Um, the uh, the volcanoes with the vinegar and baking soda. They'll do those, those type of scientific experiments. It's a lot. Of, the kids love that. So it's it's really um, hands-on experience for the kids. It's really cool. One thing that was really um, designed when they were uh, having the kids club is they, since there's two versions, there's the Oceaneer Lab and the Oceaneer Club, they designed this pathway to easily connect so the kids don't have to jump through the hallways or anything and they could be Got still it. in the secured area. So this is the Oceaneer Club. So this is more pirate-based theme, uh, like Neverland. They have a little slide here with the kids. It's a lot of fun. And I, I wish... I think a I testament to that. the building, by the way, is that you, you mentioned the theme and it instantly just through the block usage, <laughs> you can see it. You can see like the other one yes. had more of a sci-fi techie feel to it. And this one is a lot more natural with all the woods. Yeah. Um, I In terms of building, and, and this is sort of something that I'm thinking as we're walking around, have you guys ever run into the situation where like you'll complete a whole area and then find out like maybe that's perfect, but the way it lines up with another floor or deck isn't and then you have to go back like have there ever been a lot always. of um i guess roadblocks or road bumps along always. the way it always happens uh for example uh, on this ship uh it happened uh when i was doing the kids clubs and i think captain has had some experiences as well yeah um so i'm not on a disney ship but i built the norwegian dawn and i built the atrium and finished it and had spent a really long time on it and found out that I had built it um, on the wrong floor, the wrong deck. <laughs> so I had to completely I had to completely gut it and start again. And those kinds yep. of things, they just happen. And yeah. we're dedicated to making everything um, 110% realistic. So that's one of the things where you recognize your mistake and then you spend time and you go back and you fix it to make sure that yeah. it's perfect. We do a lot of um, inspections right before we even complete. So before we'll put this on MC Magic or on for download, it'll be inspected like I believe five or something something like that times just to make sure everything is right, every head is in place, every chair is in place, and everything nothing's damaged. So everything has to go through a rigorous inspection to make sure everything's in place. Uh, let's see, and this is the Buena Vista Theater. The really amazing thing about what Disney has done here, since this is um, the other theater is catered more to Broadway production. This is more for movies. So um, they they did a very um, 50s style um, movie um, dry, drive-in type of theme. Um, and old um, movie um, homes to do this type of look. So the great thing about they do is here, the same day a Disney movie, movie is premiering, um, in, you know, in a theater nearby, it's actually playing here in 3D on oh, the ship. Oh wow! And as well as not just that movie, but any other movie that they could have on board. So you have Marvel to Frozen or anything else, they they play it here. So one thing on Decade that's really amazing is that you have the two um, main suites, the Royal Disney Suite and the Walt um, Disney Suite, uh, which are the largest suites on board. Um, they hold up. They have two bedrooms, and they can, I believe, hold up to seven guests per stateroom. And the most luxurious. They're so um, popular that you have to almost take a year or more in advance to book them. So this is the Royal Disney Suite, um, number eighty-five thirty. So you have two bed, two large, expansive bedrooms, an expansive balcony veranda. So you can oh yeah. Just be out here. Pian- who want, who wants a piano in their in their in their, <laughs> in their suite? I don't know. But, you know, it's the be- the more the better. So. And, you have a big- um, it- it comes with cake. Exactly. You get a free cake and champagne. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. I'm sold. Now, how would that compare to, I guess, sort of like your standard run-of-the-mill um, cabin? Well, so a standard cabin is actually right here. We can go in if you want to. Um, and a standard cabin uh, would hold up to four people. Mm-hmm. And you can tell the size difference um, uh, on sure. the veranda on the in the room itself. And you can you can you can tell just by looking in here how different they are. Um, I'm not saying that a regular stateroom is bad, but um, like the, a Royal Disney Suite is just so much amazing, more, <laughs> yeah. much more amazing. Yeah. Another great thing about the Disney um, uh, ships, they ha- they invented this feature called the split bathroom. So for families that want to get ready faster for anything to happen, the split bathrooms. So you have one with um, your your um, your toilet as well, and with a sink, and then the other one with uh, a sink and a shower. These are a little bit tight tighter, so we couldn't fit the shower in. 
but in real life you have everything uh That's so it's genius. much fast Ex exactly it's faster faster for the families to get ready and just for parents in general to have their kids you know separated if they want to do something something or taking care of a small child for anything yeah. like that so our next stop is the navigational bridge which is the brain or you could call it the command center of the uh disney wonder so this is where captain mickey and the bridge officers will take the ship out of port sail in sail out or do any command um, functions from here. This looks so you have, awesome. Yeah, so you have here uh, the computers or a system like that to navigate the ship. She's propul she's um she has two propulsion systems. Uh, you have the two engine rooms, each featuring I believe two uh, Mac uh, engines, diesel electric, uh, also with two uh, prop and shaft propeller systems to guide the ship as well as five in total um, thrusters to navigate the ship at, into port or out of port. So three in the front and two in the aft portion. And um, one thing mm -hmm. about this ship, just the wonder that we've built, um, we're not going to go there, but we have a lot of um, hidden crew areas and Easter mm -hmm. eggs in the ship. So yeah. if you download the ship or you go on MC Magic to explore, um, you'll you'll see what we've hidden in the ship um, <laughs> yeah. for you to explore. A lot of those little secrets that you can have fun with. And then here is the Quiet Cove pool. Captain, you want to talk about this? Sure. Um, so again, another really cool feature on Disney ships is they have um, an adults-only pool. So this is for guests 18 and older. Um, so instead of spending time at the quite noisy family <laughs> pool, you can you can r relax here in the Quiet Cove. Exactly. It's really really nice, and they have actually like um, the music they put on the background just to have relaxing and. And they also have the adjacent bar, which is signals. You could have a nice bar here, and you won't have any kids bothering you or anything like that. So you could really catch some Zs or just get some rays or anything like that. <laughs> so we're now in the Goofy Pool, which is the main family pool on the Disney Wonder. Um, this is where the sail away party happens. This is where you can watch um, movies on the um, Funnel Vision, which is the giant TV screen here on the forward funnel. Um, <laughs> and also... Right here, where the pool is, you have deck parties such as Pirates in the Caribbean um, on your cruise. And during these parties, uh, you need space to dance. <laughs> so what? during the party, the floor of the pool retracts and you have a dance floor, which is really cool. That's so awesome. essentially, So essentially, from right under here, uh, large um, slabs of wood essentially roll out over the pool. So essentially for the f watching fireworks or anything like that, you have the ability to have more extra square footage for guests to just stand or dance on it, anything like that. That's smart. <laughs> it is. It's really. When it comes to Disney, they do everything right or better. So <laughs> there's never anything of Disney doing wrong, really, when it comes to designing. They're really, really intensively detailed, making sure everything's precise. And Disney has great experience when it comes to the park. So bringing that here, it's just perfect. This, uh, like we mentioned earlier, this isn't the first Disney uh, cruise ship that you've created. So going from one to the other, is it 100% completely original from one to the next? Or are there elements from like the previous ships that you're able to reuse? I, I don't know as far as the design of the ships go, if that's even possible or, or how it works out with the building. Well, as we continue building ships and ships over and over again, we learn different techniques on how to build stuff. Um, for example, on the Wonder, there are some times I did use the original Magic that was on MC Magic first, maybe a little bit of layout, somehow I did this or that. But when it comes to using something original, not really. Uh, when it came to the Wonder, it was a brand new ship. Same with the new, brand new Dream on MC Magic. Everything was from scratch. So, um, yes, we do use some things sometimes, um, like maybe a mass design. We'll, mod we'll modify it to uh, make it, you know, more realistic or, you know, exactly to make it more... Uh, an addition to the ship, so it's, like I said, realistic and perfect. Um, but uh, when it comes to bringing stuff over, not really. Everything has to be actually done by hand again. We can show you Paolo right here, which is a specialty restaurant for adults only. So if you want to have an intimate dinner with with your family or friends, without the kids, of course, um, so you could take them to an early dinner or drop them off at the kids' club, they, they'll be happy with anything, really. So, um, Captain, you want to talk about how guests could um, enjoy Paolo? Sure. Um, so Paolo is actually designed um, from, um, inspired by the canals in Venice where um, the Disney Magic and Wonder were, were partially built. Um, so Paolo's extensive um, reserve wine list features selections that hail from some of the most um, mature vineyards in the world and highlight some of the greatest super Tuscans like 
um, Ornelia didn't I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm reading off of a fact sheet, um, <laughs> but this is it's um, inspired by Venice um, and offers a lot of Italian. It's very um, very good. I, I happened to be I wouldn't I wasn't able to eat on board when I was on board the Disney ships, but I was able to try a few samples that I was given. But delicious food, it really. If you want to have an extra experience and pay a little bit more just to have a like a maybe celebrate an anniversary or anything like that, you could definitely come here. So it looks like based on the mm -hmm. sign that we're at the engine control room. Yeah, for sure. This is the no cake. <laughs> this is the um, this is the uh, main hub uh, for the engine rooms um, on board. There's two engine rooms on board, uh, followed by a separate area for the water plant to be filtered. Anything water to be brought on board from the actual ocean water, they actually take and take the salts out of it, which is a process called reverse osmosis. Okay. So as you can tell, we have uh, two engines on line, number two and number four, and one offline, and three and five on standby at the moment. So we can hear on these monitors, we'll be checking if it's working, everything, you know, you know, always making sure that we don't get stranded at sea for sure. So yeah, exactly. that would be bad. <laughs> that would be horrible. So um, yes. there's and if the engine room were to flood, <laughs> exactly. Is that By sort of typical for for a ship to have like? that many engines but only use one or two or yeah for sure okay. um um actually when it comes to propulsion um not all the engines are actually used for actually you know for propulsion to get the ship from point a to point b it's actually for hotel facilities like electricity um uh. water filtration anything like that but when it comes to propulsion it's actually not that much it might take a uh, 50 percent of an engine maybe one or two if they really want to get somewhere fast but the other engines are actually used for um, hotel facilities. Interesting. Plus, even though you have, um, you know, as many engines as you do, using all of them to full potential um, um, just puts too much pressure on the ship, mm -hmm. and it can shorten the life of the ship, even mm -hmm. though that's in many years. But yeah, um, and there's no need to have all the engines to full potential when exactly. you have so many. It's, it, it, you don't always want to have them on live. Maybe one goes on offline. It's just a backup for another one. Right. Yeah, and you have these bulkheads to separate the actual engine rooms from one to another because if there's a, an event of a flood or something that is a catastrophe to the ship that could threaten the life of it and the passengers on board, they contain with these bulkheads the water or anything like that. So they actually, it, yeah, so these are, um, we, the ship uses five Mac engines, very, very powerful. Um, they use for um, propulsion, the uh, hotel facilities, etc., etc. And then over here, we have a water, um, a water plant, which is used for the desalination process of the reverse osmosis to use the ocean water. It looks like there's a flood. Look like one of the engines. Are, looks like one of the waters <laughs> is malfunctioning. <laughs> I gotta fix that. And then over here, we have fuel tanks and uh, things like that to be working together. But when it things like that, when it comes to the engine room, the engine room is a very compact, very, very big section. This is only actually a part, a small, small section of it. There's a and lot we're underwater. More. Exactly, and that's another feature. We're actually underwater right now. Oh wow! Now we're now we're like semi underwater because we came up. We're on the deck. crew deck. Yeah, we're on deck B, I believe. Is this deck B? I believe so. This I think is, so. Yeah, this is for storage and things like that are brought here. Okay. And this is also where um, the crew will live. Yeah, this is. Um, the cabins for the crew are not as luxurious as no, say, not. guest <laughs> guest rooms, but mm -hmm. um, you they, know they fit up to four t people uh, at a time. Sometimes two or three, depending on the actual um, how big the actual stateroom is. But these people, um, the crew, works uh, for sometimes some six to ten months at a time. So they really take a lot of um, it takes a lot of work to actually just make sure just to not be away from your family yeah it's just the actual work it's like sometimes 12 to 15 hours a day of just work intensive seven days a week so it's a lot a lot of work mm -hmm. and um a fun fact is that um disney cruise line members uh represent on an average of 86 different nationalities mm -hmm. and um it's growing more and more with that with the, their bigger ships so yeah you have people from 86 different countries um or more yeah, sometimes, sometimes exactly more. yeah okay so we've talked a lot about uh the disney wonder the ship and how <laughs> disney builds cruise ships and what it was like building this in minecraft but i want to take a moment to talk a little bit about you guys so a lot of people might not know but you guys are part of a group called nautical craft and you yeah. work with mc magic for the disney specific ships but that's not all you create so can you tell me a little bit more about nautical craft and what you guys do and how you got about doing it yeah, we start. We we actually founded Narco Craft in 2012. Uh, it's a we've been it's only yeah three almost four years, 
And uh, we build not just um, the Disney ships for MC Magic, um, but we build other ships like Royal Caribbean, Carnival Cruise Lines, anything like that, or the mass market, or just anything in general. We build it for sure. Um, we build ocean liners, um, cruise ships, uh, yachts, things like that, or anything um, custom ships actually as well. I don't specify in customs, but my other team members like Captain here and some others like to do custom ships, like they make their own imaginative ship, and they make amazing things, honestly. Um, they also, we also make planes, trains, things like that. We really like um, Houses, the trans architecture. Exact architecture and transportation. That's really our field. And I'll have uh, details in the description below, but if people yeah. want to see more of these, uh, the non-Disney ships, how can they go about doing it? So if anyone wants to find us off of, you know, MC Magic or Disney, uh, we all have our own Planet Minecrafts. Most of them are just our usernames. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have Twitters. Um, I have a Twitter. Charles has a Twitter, um, as well as a few other members. And we also have a Nautical Craft YouTube channel and potentially an Instagram coming in the future. So you can check us out on social yeah. media, Planet Minecraft, YouTube, um, a lot of places. And if you also, also want server updates, we actually have our, our Nautical Craft Twitter. So at Nautical Craft, you could follow us there for updates, not just on Nautical Craft server, but maybe some builds that have just come up from the team. So if you want to subscribe to um, or follow that, you could get that in good quick updates. Fantastic. And in regards to the Disney Wonder, uh, current plans, if I recall correctly, are sometime this summer, people will be able to go and explore this themselves? Very t soon this summer, the Disney Wonder will be on MC Magic for everyone to explore and We'll have guided tours, uh, fireworks shows, and a lot more like lifeboat drills and so much fun having in parties and sail away parties. And, and just... showing all the Easter eggs. Exactly. We'll be touring you around. So we're so excited to have the maiden rival on MC Magic, which is very soon this summer. Well, fantastic. Uh, Charles, Captain Soleil, this has been <laughs> really cool. This ship looks amazing. I mean, I've said it multiple times, but it really is mind blowing that, you know, this can be built in Minecraft and it can be so accurate. So I want to thank you guys for the tour and I, I want to thank you guys for creating this and not just this one, but the other Disney ships out there and all of the other ships you've created. Um, everybody watching, like I said, later, later this summer, you'll be able to um, experience these ships in person on MC Magic. I highly suggest checking out the links in the description to see the other ships that they've crafted. Um, again, thank you so much for having me. Thanks. Well, thank it you really, for having us. Exactly. We really <laughs> have a, the privilege to be on your channel, and we thank you so much for coming. We hope we can toy around with the newer ships coming out this year. And to everyone watching, thank you so much for watching. Whatever you're doing this week, make the most of it because it makes it that much better. I want to know in the comments below, what was your favorite part of this, this ship? Because there are so many different and wildly detailed parts. I want to know what you guys uh, liked most. Uh, mm -hmm. Have a great week. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bon voyage. Bon voyage. <laughs>